I am a publisher, writer, editor, daughter, sister, auntie, dog mom, and many other things, including currently a cancer patient. But I am not a doctor or medical professional of any sort. What you are about to watch is an episode of my journey through cancer. I'm sharing my adventure with you in hopes that you'll find something here that's comforting and maybe even inspiring. This video is not intended to provide any sort of diagnosis or treatment plan. Please, please go talk with your doctor for professional medical advice. Day 18. Um, okay, two things. First, I have done something terrible to my back um, while I was rearranging the furniture in my mother's room at the um, long-term care facility, and it is so bad that I've taken a pill. So I hope I'm not too goofy tonight, or maybe I hope I am. Second thing, and I don't say this enough on these videos, but all cancers are different. Um, I have rectal cancer, which is being treated as anal cancer because some of the cells in the tumor, um, the makeup of them, and also because of its proximity to my anus, um, which is a part of one's body that one is delighted to draw attention to. The point is, I'm going to talk about putting together, choosing the components of the diet that I'm going to maintain while I'm um, in cancer treatment and probably beyond. Um, and I have anal cancer, so I'm going to be looking at foods that are my cancer specific. Um, if you have a different type of cancer, you are going to probably be wanting to look at other types of foods. Um, although I'm sure there are things that I'm going to say that are applicable to um, almost all cancer diets. So the bottom line is to do your research, talk to your healthcare provider, and create your own plan for what you're going to eat uh, to help in your recovery from cancer. Now, talking your diet over with your doctor or healthcare provider may prove to be less than satisfactory. Hippocrates was a physician who lived during the classical Greek era. He's known um, widely as the father of medicine and the, as the father of medicine and one of his best known quotes is, let food be thy medicine, um, which means in a really reductive nutshell that we need to eat healthy things in order to maintain our health. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. I am what I am, and with Popeye it wasn't yams, it was spinach. Um, eat five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Avoid trans fats. We all know this basic um, information, and most of us probably uh, align our diets around it, you know, to some degree in our everyday lives. But for all of what science knows about nutrition, it can feel, if you're talking to a practitioner of traditional Western medicine, as if you have just said, gee, if I sprinkle myself with fairy dust and turn clockwise three times before breakfast each morning, is that gonna cure my cancer? Um, there just isn't enough emphasis on, uh, on nutrition and what that can do to improve and maintain your health and help to cure whatever disease um, you may be suffering from. We patients are left, for the most part, to figure out what diet we should adopt um, for ourselves. And figuring that out can be overwhelming, it can be complicated, and it can be contradictory, and thus very frustrating. I know how important eating clean is. Um, eat organic as much as possible. Stay away from processed meats. Um, these are things that you know I've done in the main for years. Um, when I was diagnosed with cancer, I became kind of rigid about everything in my diet being um, clean. You know, I immediately gave up some of my favorite vices that I didn't have often, but boy, when I had them, I enjoyed them. Like, okay, McDonald's French fries, fresh out of the fryer, lots of salt. Okay, no more, gone. I also immediately went completely vegan and um, 
give up alcohol entirely. I did these things because my intuition told me to do them. And it was a good start on figuring out what kind of diet I wanted to eat during my cancer experience. Um, it really was. But I knew I was going to do more research. Um, what I found out, what I found out was, for example, the American Cancer Society um, doesn't say that you should give up alcohol entirely. It just asks you to uh, partake in moderation, of course. It did say something very interesting about antioxidants, which as we discussed in a previous video, um, are um, molecules that will donate one of their electrons to a free radical, which is missing one of its electrons, thus stabilizing that free radical and, um, and, and counteracting any harm that free radical might do to your system. However, American Cancer Society says, you may not wanna increase your intake of antioxidants because while yes, they do stabilize free radicals, they also may help to stabilize cancer cells that you're killing off or you're trying to kill off. So eating a lot of uh, matcha in my smoothies in the morning and drinking a lot of green tea, that may be off the table. What about the fact that cancer cells feed on sugar, glucose? Uh, according to the American Cancer Society, there really isn't enough research for them to give a straightforward answer on that. Uh, could it be because um, sugar is less nutritious and by eating a lot of sugar, you are not um, then also taking in enough nutrition to keep your cells healthy and to help you um, recover from, your cells recover um, from the cancer? Um, or could it be because cancer, um, can't, sorry, could it be because sugar causes insulin surges and insulin surges help cancer cells to grow? They're not sure. Um, but the fact is that cancer cells thrive on glucose, which means a low carb, low sugar diet is probably a really good thing. Specifically regarding anal cancer, what I found out is that a diet high in fiber, um, which you can get through various means, nuts, beans, lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, they recommend five servings a day and um, I'll, I'll do a recipe um, in a future video for my smoothies, which are really good, but I have a smoothie every morning and I start with you know, two big handfuls of either spinach or kale and then I put a banana and strawberries and an orange and an apple and or um, a mango um, or you know blueberries or something in it. So I always get my five servings of fruits and vegetables first thing in the morning. So I feel like I'm covered in that area. I just have to increase the, uh, the consumption even more. Things like uh, broccoli, um, you know, carrots, um, butternut squash, uh, dairy, things with calcium in them that, uh, that I don't eat a lot of anyway unless I'm at a cheese platter and then I eat too much of it. So I have to be careful about that. Um, and also uh, a lot of healthy fats they recommend, but healthy fats, not animal fats. So I'm weighing all this, this information, these different bits of information. And what I came up with for myself is that I am going to stick to a modified ketogenic diet. A uh, ketogenic diet is a diet that is, um, some people think it's the paleo diet and it's not. It's a diet that is low in carbs and low in sugar. Um, I'll modify the normal keto diet um, by one, making sure that everything I eat is clean and organic. Um, and two, I will not be using as much butter and animal fat, red meat, as uh, a normal keto diet um, recommends. I've bought three books, but these are um, The Complete Ketogenic Diet for Beginners. Um, 
the one pot ketogenic cookbook and fight cancer with a ketogenic diet. Um, all good books. I haven't read them all cover to cover yet, but I have been through, um, I have been through a lot of the information and, um, I think I'm going to be fairly easily able to incorporate a lot of the principles, um, in, in a diet. Um, I won't be drinking, as I said, boatloads of green tea or putting a bunch of matcha in my morning smoothie. Um, I'm not going to um, tamper with the amount um, or, or try to load up on antioxidants. I'm gonna put my blueberries in my smoothie when I have blueberries in the refrigerator, but again, not the matcha. Um, so just not decrease it and not increase it, just keep it the same. Um, I'm also concerned that I'm not going to want to cook for myself uh, while I have cancer, or I'm not going to be able to cook for myself while I have cancer. So I'm trying out a, a number of different uh, keto meal delivery services. Um, and I will let you know in a future video which ones I like and which ones I don't and why. So this is an outline of where I am now in deciding what I'm going to eat during cancer. While I'm going through the cancer experience, I will probably do more research. Um, I will learn what my body likes and doesn't like. Um, and I will adapt as we go along. Um, I am so grateful to be living in the time we're living in where doctors and researchers have created so many treatments that to a cancer patient can seem like miracles. And I'm so lucky to be alive at a time and to be in a place that I can take advantage of those seeming miracles. Um, so do I think that changing my diet, um, even minimally or ra as radically as I might, um, is that gonna cure my cancer? No, no, but it could help, uh, probably will help. And it's another advantage that I can give myself. And I want to take advantage of every advantage that I can, and diet is one of them. If you liked this video or found it helpful, give it a like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell.